All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put together the indifference maps with the budget line that we just learned how to do. So let's go ahead and uh, review what we've done so far and, uh, and, then see, and then get an idea of where we're going. So we're trying to understand how individuals maximize their utility. We know that all individuals have an unlimited uh, amount of wants, okay? We, there is no limit on how much satisfaction that we, uh, that we will want. Um, and we will constantly try to get more and more of it. So what stops us from just getting more and more and more and more satisfaction continually? Well, the fact that we have limited resources. So we have to budget our resources. Now we mainly are talking about money in this class, but it's important to understand that you also have to budget the time that you spend on your physical resources, on natural resources. You know, um, an interesting example of this, in my opinion, is a, a person who owns, uh, let's say, two homes. Let's say that they have a house in, uh, let's say, in the Bahamas, uh, a vacation home in the Bahamas, and then their, uh, you know, let's say their regular house is um, maybe in, um, I don't know, up in the mountains in, in Tennessee or something, okay? And uh, let's say that on their birthday, okay, they would love to spend their birthday on the beach and at their vacation house in the Bahamas, but they also love being up in the mountains so much they would love to spend their birthday up in the mountains in their regular house. Well, they can only spend their birthday in one place and therefore they have to budget how they're going to spend their time at uh, their you know, physical resources, the homes that they own. Okay, And we have to do the same thing. Uh, we have to, um, for example, I have, um, a, I have a laptop computer and in my household we also have a desktop computer. Uh, there are four people in my household. I have two children and my wife and I. And, you know, it's only two con computers for four people. Now, we also have uh, a couple tablets and we have a couple, you know, our phones. So if we want to look things up on the Internet, we have lots of devices. But there are some things that you can only do on a PC, okay? And so we have to decide... Who is going to spend time? You know, my son wants to play video games. You know, is he going to get to spend time on the desktop or is he going to be on my laptop? Or do we have to tell them, no, you know, there's more important things that we have to do on the laptop or the desktop. And my children uh, argue sometimes over which of the two of them is going to be able to use the better computer of the two computers. And I don't know if you've ever been that, through that with a sibling or with, uh, you know, someone else in your household. Uh, when I went to Palm Beach Atlantic, um, there was one desktop computer. Uh, I was in tow the Towers Residence Hall, and I was in one of the rooms where there were three students living. And um, uh, believe it or not, I was on the top bunk because um, I was the last one into the room uh, when we checked in. And uh, we had to, you know, the three of us had to share one computer. This is back in the day when there were not a lot of laptop computers, just like 1997. So we had to share this one computer. We had to budget the time of that computer between the competing needs of me and my two other roommates who had to share this one computer. And you have to do the same thing with your phone. You have to do the same thing with the, the bathroom in your house. You know, the time in there has to be budgeted. You know, I don't know if you're the kind of person that has to bang on the door, tell your sibling, hurry up in there, you know. These are all resources that have to be budgeted. They are limited resources that have to be budgeted to, to, for the competing unlimited wants of the people that want to use those things, okay? So mostly in this class, we're going to talk about money as something we're budgeting, but it's important to understand that all of these concepts can be expanded to ideas that, ex that, that extend to much more than just money. Uh, we, remember, there's land, there's labor, there's capital. Okay. Um, all right, so, so the deal with the budget line, our limited resources, is that we have to remain, we have to remain in here. Okay, we are constrained to inside of the budget line. We cannot go out here outside of the budget line. So our budget line constrains us this direction, okay? 
where over here in our indifference map, where do we want to go? In our indifference map, we want to move this direction. So our, our unlimited wants make us, make us want to go further out. We're pushing this way on the graph, and our budget is pushing us this way in our graph. So we have this struggle between wanting to be out here but being forced to be in here. Now this is a natural thing uh, for human beings. Uh, money or not, in any decision-making circumstance, we always want more, but we're always constrained to a, certain, uh, to a certain limit. And that's one of the reasons why I become confused when people say, uh, you know, why are you trying to hold me down? Or, you know, why are you telling me that I can't do that? Okay, well, we need people to tell you you can't do everything. Because if you try to do everything, you're going to use up all the resources for society or for a group of people. So people need c to constrain you. And there's movies out there and songs that, uh, you know, get where people get angry about this idea of being held back and being stopped from their big dreams and everything they want to do. Well, you can't use all of the resources on that one dream, okay? Now, I'm not saying don't go for your dreams. I'm saying that every time you have a desire, there is an economic limit in the resources to you achieving that desire. And we have to become comfortable with being told no. So when you're a salesperson, you say to your boss, hey, I got this great idea, let's go do this thing. And he says, nope, it's just not in the cards. And you say, oh, you guys just aren't risk takers. You're not gonna, you know, why don't you see a good thing when it comes along? Well, understand, there's a lot more at stake than just what you think is going on. And I say no to my kids all the time when they say they want to do something. And that's because I understand the bigger picture of resources and their desires. And remember also that when you decide on a desire, you know, for example, you know, you may see, you know, five or six girls that you like or five or six boys that you like, okay? But if you're going to get married, you know, you're picking one, okay? You're giving up others. There's a constraint. You only have so much time. Okay? All right, I know I'm belaboring these examples, but it's really important that you understand the idea that, that you will always want to be out here and the resources will always be constraining you in here. And that is a naturally existing struggle. Okay? And... Just because we can move our budget out doesn't mean that it will eventually become an unlimited budget. It will never become an unlimited budget, okay? Even though our desires will always be unlimited, okay? And so uh, here's what we're going to do. We are going to draw the budget line and the indifference curves on the same coordinate plane and we're going to see, we're going to try and understand how we can get the most, the most utility out of the limited budget that we have. All right, so let's say that this is our budget line, okay? That this is the limit on our monetary budget that we have to spend. I want to remind you about something. I want to remind you that we want to choose a point on the coordinate plane, a quantity of X and a quantity of Y that is on the budget line. I said that we want to spend all of our money. We want to use up all of our money. Now, I don't mean that in an irresponsible way. I mean that in a sense of if we don't use all of our money, the excess money basically just goes away entirely. And I want to remind you, you might say, well, if you save some money on pro product X and product Y, then you can put that money away and save it for later. Yes, I understand that, but now you have just introduced a third decision. Product X, product Y, and savings. And savings is, we're, we're only doing two things. If you want savings to be one of the decision options, well, that is either product X or product Y. So, 
we can do a quantity of savings and a quantity of, let's say, um, pizza. Okay, save some of our money and spend some of our money on pizza. But we will use all of our money on pizza and savings. Okay, so if we don't, if we're inside the line, we're making an inefficient decision. We're getting less utility than we could get. So we want to push out as far. Remember, we're trying to push out as far as we can. Well, this line is the limit of how far we can push out. And if I'm trying to push out from the origin, I can only push as far as the line. And so all I'm trying to convince you right now is for what we are about to do, we want to be on the line, not inside the line. Inside the line gives us less utility. It's an inefficient option. Outside of the line is impossible. On the line is an efficient use of resources to give us the most utility that we can get. Okay, what I've drawn in here is one indifference curve on kind of on top of the budget line. And here's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about how much utility I can get with my budget, okay? And so you'll see that this indifference curve provides 217 utility. And so here's my question. I have a couple questions. One, can I get 217 utility? And the answer to that is yes. I can, if, remember that every single point along this curve will give 217 utility. Every point along this curve is a combination of X and Y that will give 217. Well, can I get this point out here? Well, if we consider our budget, the answer is no. We can't get this combination because it is outside of our budget. We have to either be on the line or inside the line. Can I get this combination of goods? No, that combination of goods is outside the budget line. Are there any points that are inside or on my budget line for this 217 curve? The answer is yes. I can purchase this combination, which is on the budget line. That'll give me 217. I can purchase this quantity, which is on the budget line, also 217 utility. But watch this. Can't I actually purchase this amount inside of the budget line, get 217 utility, and also have some uh, resources left over, but this point, though it gives me 217, is an inefficient use of resources, okay? Uh, so here's, here's what I'm saying. I know that I am capable of achieving 217 utility because the budget line crosses over or touches that line. So, so here's what we need to understand is that um, if the budget line touches an indifference curve, I can achieve that level of utility. Now my question, my next question, given this example, is can I achieve more than 217 utility? Looking at this graph, looking at the indifference curve, looking at the budget line. Now I want to remind you that didn't we say that as we go from the origin outward, that if we get to the other side of an indifference curve, right? we can get to a higher level of utility. So if this curve represents 217 utility, then all of the points on this side, on the left side, or the bottom, left side or bottom of that curve represent less utility, and all of the points above and to the right of that curve represent more utility. Well, then I really just need to answer the question. Are there any points that are above 
this curve or to the right of this curve, but are still inside of my budget line? And the answer to that question is yes. Do you see this region right here? Right along here, this whole region right here is below the budget line, but above the indifference curve. And so this entire region right here is a region where with my budget, with my resources, I can achieve more than 217 utility. And so I should, I should try to get more than 217 utility. If I get less than 217 utility, then I am not maximizing my utility. This graph shows me that I have sufficient resources to be able to get more than 217 utility and therefore I should. I should try and get more than 217 utility. So what I'm really looking for is I really should be choosing a point that is on the curve and above this other um, indifference curve that is that that crosses over in two places. So the idea is we don't want to pick an indifference curve that crosses over in two places because that means there will always be a place along our budget line that will give us more utility than that indifference curve. Okay, next question. Can I achieve utility on this indifference curve? Let's say that this one is 280. Can I achieve 280 utility? Well, this in indifference curve is completely, the whole thing is completely on the outside of my budget line. And therefore, I have insufficient resources to be able to reach that indifference curve. Therefore, I can't achieve 280 utility. Therefore, I must, to maximize my utility, I must be looking for some utility level that is between 280 and 217, okay? And if you can understand those concepts, then we can now move on to uh, actually graphing on a coordinate plane with numbers. All right, so this is a typical problem that I would give you to try and maximize utility. I would give you a coordinate plane, product X and product Y. It would have some indifference curves on it. So we can see three indifference curves here. We've got the purple indifference curve would give us a utility of 61. The orange one would give us a utility of 86. And the red one would give us utility of 100. And here's what I would ask you. I would ask you what quantity of product X and product Y would this person need to consume in order to maximize their utility given their budget constraint. Now your budget constraint is right up here and we've done this before, right? I give you the price of product X which is $15 per, the price of product Y which is $10 per, and the income this person has is $120. So this is, this is their limited income that they have to budget. So we need to find out, well, how many of X could they buy and how many of Y could they buy and what are all the combinations of X and Y that they could buy. And so here's the basic idea. Remember what we said we had to do. We have to divide the income by at the price of X, so 120 divided by 15. You may need a calculator for that, but the answer is 8. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to a quantity of 8 along the axis, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and we're going to put a dot. Right. So we could purchase 8 of X and 0 of Y. Right. Okay. That's one possibility. We can also divide the income by the price of y. 120 divided by 10 is 12, right? So we go up 3, 6, 9, 12. So we'll put a dot right here. So we know that this person could purchase uh, 12 units of y and 0 units of x. But let me show you why they should not do that. If they purchase 8, y, or 8 of x and 0 y, look, they are below a utility of 61. Okay, and it's very likely 
that somewhere between here and here they would be able to cross over that uh, this uh, or touch this uh, indifference curve and achieve a utility of 61. Okay. In fact, remember our next step after we have these two dots is we need to connect the two dots. So I'm going to grab this uh, level right here, and I'm going to I'm going to put it right here. And look, this line I'm about to draw. See what's about to happen? It's going to cross over. It's going to cross over this purple indifference curve. Boom! It just crossed over. Look at that. That means we know that along the budget line, we can definitely achieve a utility of 61. But look, it went to the other side. The budget line is now above this purple indifference curve, so we know that this person could achieve a utility higher than 61. So it's a terrible idea to purchase all of Y or all of X because both of those points are below a utility of 61. And remember, we want to maximize our utility. So let's go ahead and draw this line in here again. Go back to drawing the line. There we go. And there is our budget line. And you may see something magical happening here, and I hope you do. If you notice it, you got a good mathematical and graphical eye. So here's the deal. We can see that the budget line crosses over an indifference curve of 61 here and here, which means that this region right in here is going to give utility more than 61. So we shouldn't settle for 61. This person can get a combination of X and Y that will give them more than 61. For example, if they purchase 1, 2, 3, 4 of X and 1, 2, 3, 4 of Y, 4 of X and 4 of Y, which is inefficient because it's inside the budget line, would give them more than 61 utility because it's above, it's outside of the 61 indifference curve, right? Here's what we want to know is, can we get as far as 86? Can we get 86 utility? And the question is, it, we can only get, or the answer is, we can only get 86 utility if this budget line touches the indifference curve for 86 utility. And look at that, it really does. It just barely touches it. You know what we call that? We call that a tangent line. And we're going to see a lot of tangent lines in microeconomics. Those are usually very important points mathematically in microeconomics. A tangent line is a place where a line just barely touches a curve and then moves away. It only touches it at one, in one point right on the outside of the curve. And that's what's happening right here. This is a magical point. Every single point along this budget line is below the orange indifference curve. Every point except one. That means that at every point along this budget line, we're getting less than 86 utility. And at every point along the budget line here, we're getting less than 86 utility. But at that one point, that one magical point, we are hitting 86 utility. And that means that that is the maximum amount of utility. That point is the point of maximum utility. And so the question goes, how much utility can this person achieve if they want to maximize their utility given their, their uh, income and given the prices of these products? The answer is they can achieve 86 utility. It's the indifference curve wherever the budget line is tangent, just at one point. Can this person achieve 100 utility? No, the budget line never even comes close to touching the red indifference curve. So this person cannot achieve 100 utility. The most they can get is 86. Okay, so then the question is, how much of X should they buy and how much of Y should they buy in order to get their maximum utility of 86? Well, it's, it's the co whatever the coordinate is of this point. The coordinate of that point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 1, 2, 3. So we're going to put 6, 3, and that means that in order to maximize their utility, this person has to purchase 6 of X and 3 of Y. 
for a utility of 86. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you one of the problems that you're going to have in this online class <laughs> is you're going to have a problem uh, draw, drawing in a budget line on an indifference map that's on your computer screen. It's not on paper. You don't have a ruler. You can't put the ruler up with the pencil and draw. And so I'm going to give you a couple different strategies that you can use to be able to um, sort of vi in your head visually identify a budget line uh, on a computer screen. All right, so let's go ahead and stick with the same example. Uh, and I'm going to give you a few things that you could possibly do. Uh, now, one possibility, uh, by the way, this could help with notes because you might be looking at this and saying, how can I take notes on this? It's so difficult to reproduce the grid. Well, one possibility is, you know, you could use graph paper for your notes. We're going to be drawing a, whole, a, a bunch of graphs in this class, so you may want to consider having graph paper. A second possibility goes like this. I had a student uh, years ago, uh, actually it's probably about two years ago, and what uh, she would do is this, is she would actually take the screen, uh, like this computer screen, right? And what she would do is she would, uh, she would do a print screen, and she would take the print screen and she would then put it into like paint if you're technologically, you know, capable. Or she'd put it into uh, some sort of picture manager and she would crop the picture so that all she saw was this. Then she would print it in color. Then she would cut it out with scissors and paste it into her notebook. Then she could draw the budget line, like the one I just drew, in her notes, and she would she would know um, how to do, you know, in her notes, what it is that we just did. Okay, that's, that's a possibility. Now that's just for note taking. Now let's say that you are taking the exam. Well, let's say you're taking the exam or quiz, and you have one of these problems, and I give you this picture, and you have to be able to draw in a budget line. Okay, uh, well, one thing you could do is, let's say that you have a, um, a flat screen, okay, like maybe a touch screen or a very flat screen, what you could do is you could um, hold a ruler over the flat screen where you think the budget line should, should go, and then you would be able to see uh, where it touches, which line it's tangent to, and at which point, and that would help you a lot, okay? Um, but if you can't do that, something else you could do is maybe, um, Take a, uh, take a screenshot of just the graph, you know, maybe a snip, and then open it up in a, in a painting program and, and then draw a line. You know, if you know how to use those, uh, those features where you grab a line, you can anchor the line at one of the X points, drag the line over to the other, to the X point, uh, for Y point to the X point, and see where that line is tangent to a, uh, one of the indifference curves, okay? Um, now, this last one is sort of a mental visual way, okay? And, and here's the idea. Here's how it goes. What you do is you identify the quantity of y, y equals, and the quantity of x. Now, we already said that if we divide income by 15, x is, is 8. And what you'll do is you'll draw that. Now, it has to be y on top and x on bottom. This is a slope thing. So if you're one of those people that's pretty good with slope and straight lines, this is what I'm talking about. We're going to use the slope and the intercept to visually follow where the line goes. Okay, So we're going to put y on top, x on bottom. We know that x is at 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We know y starts at 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And this 12, that is the intercept. Okay. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to start at 12 in your mind. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to put my finger there. That's where I'm starting. And then what I'm going to do is this. is I'm going to reduce this. I'm going to make this a fraction, 12 over 8, and I'm going to reduce it. I know that I can reduce this fraction. If I divide the top and the bottom by 4, I get 3 over 2. And technically, Every single one of these is negative, so you got to put a negative in front of it. So this is negative 3 over 2. So what I'm going to do is, from here, I'm going to go down 3 and then over 2. So from here, I'll go 1, 2, 3, 
one, two. Well, I've already crossed the purple line, so I know the purple line is not my answer. Then I'm going to go one, two, three, one, two, and then one, two, three. Oh, I'm kind of touching a point there, but I'm going over one, two. Bing, 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 bing. I just touched the orange line. So I know that orange is in. Now I'm going to go down three and over two and see if I cross over orange again. One, two, three, one, two. Nope. I only touched orange in one place as I did the down three over two. Therefore, and this is where I touched it, therefore that's my point. That is my tangent line point. Okay. Now, I understand that that's only for visually uh, uh, strong people, people might, who might be good at geometry or something like that. But that's usually how I do it. When I do these problems, um, when I'm making the problems, typically what I'll do is I'll just... I'll just follow down and over until I hit a curve at one place. And that makes this the, the point of maximum uh, utility. Okay? All right. I hope that helps. I'm going to give you a lot of examples. Uh, that's, that's all we have for maximizing utility graphically. Um, and I could, there are several different questions I could ask. I could give you the same graph and I could ask you uh, how much utility someone would get from this point. And you'd have to just say between 61 and 86. Uh, I could ask you uh, which potential point would give somebody a utility of 95. Well, we know 95 is between 100 and 86. So you'd have to pick a point that's somewhere between 86 and 100. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, you have to be able to draw the, the budget line and know whether a point is efficient or inefficient or not possible. Okay? Um, make sure you do the practice quiz. I'm going to give you lots of these examples, lots of problems to help sharpen up your skill on the practice quiz. So please make sure you do the practice quiz, maybe even a, two or three times before you finally take the regular quiz. Okay? Well, that's all we have for uh, maximizing utility graphically. And then in the next set of lessons, we're going to learn how to maximize utility uh, using a table of numbers.